He's got the toys. He's got showmanship. And he's got sex appeal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the great Southwest, here's the guru of gadgets, the dapper and dashing Don Bain, the Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor. Hello, everyone. This is Don Bain, the Gadget Professor, coming to you live and in color from NAB 2014. We are located uh, in the North Hall, uh, right between the two, uh, <laughs> the two places where you exhibit, register, and you attendee register. So uh, people are starting to filter in uh, for sure, and uh, this place will be really packed in about an hour. And uh, as I look out the doors... Uh, uh, they're just flocking in. So we are here today uh, to bring you interviews every 15 minutes with the latest in technology. And today we are very honored to have the people from Cobalt here. And they make some amazing converters. And uh, I actually use them, uh, believe it or not. And uh, let's turn the show right over to Jesse. Jesse, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, so I'm the Western Region Sales, ma sales okay. Manager and Product Manager. Uh, Chris is going to give us a little history on Cobalt. Excellent. He is our senior executive Vice President of Sales Christopher, Department. thank you for coming in. I appreciate oh, it very much. I appreciate being here. Uh, yeah, so I can tell you a little bit of the history of the co company. In uh, 1997, it was founded by Gene Zimmerman. Right. Uh, uh, Gene has done many things. He's won Emmys for doing uh, really? uh, uh, engineering for Olympics. Wow. But uh, he was asked by uh, NEP, uh, they were looking for uh, SDI to analog uh, down converter in a little box. They said they wanted 200. And so he was just doing that as a, a favor for them. And then they purchased some like 3,000. He thought, oh my oh, God. this is actually a company. And so that's where the company wow. started. Little throw down boxes. I had no idea. Yeah, little throw down boxes from there. And it's grown since then. 2006, we uh, uh, co-founded Open Gear with Ross Video and Ward Beck. Okay. And uh, that's, uh, we are now uh, a major Open Gear partner. And the Open Gear family is 50 to 60 different companies uh, anybody who doesn't know open gear is cards that all fit into a standard frame format uh, so uh, I've been with the company eight years and so you know we've we've seen considerable growth from 1997 when Gene started we have a number of new products uh, displayed at this show uh, that we're displaying um, and uh, I'll hand over to Jesse to give you a little bit Great. more information on those okay thank, thank you Chris. You. yeah thanks for having us again so um, the Genesis story of Cobalt that Chris just shared um, has grown into our relationship with Ross on the dashboard line and just to touch on the original form factors of the small boxes that we've done right. historically we've branded that line of products the, the blue box group and uh, that is to really gather that market share that that you know we uh, right it makes we it gave up to the obviously it's, let's so, hold up the box so we can see yeah, it, so this it's blue is actually uh, from the BBG 1000 series okay the original blue box group are smaller throw down modules uh, mostly dip switch configurable uh, within that range we have uh, fiber optic uh, single and dual channel transmit receives we have transceivers uh, we have uh, a range of analog to digital, digital to analog converters, very high quality uh, converters with audio embedding, de-embedding. We have SDI uh, to HDMI and HDMI to SDI converters. Um, you can force RGB or YPVPR color space. is very popular with system integrators, very flexible platform. If I can just interrupt sure. Jesse there. On the HDMI to SDI, SDI to HDMI, we have a unique, uh, we're able to power it through USB from a monitor. Oh really? So this actually means. Oh, I did that not know that. This, this what, what a convenience no, that is! Wow. Yeah, well, there's, and there's no temperature. I mean, the, the, there's no temperature growth. It stays cool for days. It's running extremely cool. Uh, you know, so some of our competitors who will be nameless, yeah, that, they that, get rather warm. That's an important fact to you know to bring out the, is is the heat factor because what happens is some of these boxes because they are they are small and they pack a lot of electronics in them. And essentially what happens is when they go over their tolerance, particularly if they're using in hot areas or outside in the sun, they overheat. And you might not think that's a big deal, but believe me, if the components aren't designed uh, to keep cool, they start to break down. And when they start to break down, it plays absolute havoc. Now, the audience right now, you know, seeing a nice clean HD uh, video here, but we are using converters. Uh, we're using uh, an HDMI to SDI or SDI to HDMI, I don't remember. But 
Uh, if that box started to heat up and were to malfunction, you wouldn't be watching me, trust me. So, you know, when you're looking for, for high quality and you're looking to, you know, to get a, a, a converter box, you want to look at the cobalt because th they are designed to withstand the heat, as you just mentioned, yep. and that's an important factor and it's an yep. important cost factor. So even if you're paying a little bit more, b believe me, it's worth it to avoid that heat issue. Yeah, am I, am yeah. I not correct with that? That, 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 is, that is true, and, and yeah. uh, we offer five-year warranty on, on all our... Five-year warranty, okay. It's, a, it's actually a hallmark of a good electronic design oh, as well. sure. Therm thermal uh, efficiency is definitely something that we look out for in that, in that product line. Um, another feature that you could derive from the... Another benefit you could derive from that USB power feature is that it also powers over traditional uh, DC power supplies with a locking thread connector. If you use both of those at the same time, you can have redundant power capabilities in a brick form factor if you're doing mission you know, critical right. on-screen uh, monitor conversion behind the talent. You don't want that thing blanking out on you. If your uh, wall ward power supply goes down, you could actually have you know, redundant power. So, so that's, uh, that's an attractive feature to a lot of our users there as well. Uh, we have long cable run capabilities, uh, EQ uh, up to 650 feet of Belden 1694 at HD rates on the SDI to HDMI converter. Uh, we have the ability to switch the center channel and LFE uh, audio channels when you do the conversion from SDI to HDMI as per no, the that's spec. Cr that's or crucial. You, to the HDMI spec, or you can maintain the SDI channel um, array as well. Uh, we had that come from a couple of users now, as well. So. Let's talk about the person who needs a box and you have two or three choices and they're not sure which one they need. Is there a way that they can get in touch with someone at your company, talk through their problem, and then you recommend what they should use? and actually you would help them understand how it works and things like that? Definitely, we have uh, three regional sales managers at this point in the United States. Chris handles international, so I handle the Western region. We have a gentleman named Jacob Kinsey who handles the central US and Canada. And on the Eastern side, we have Anthony Click. And we all have a wide array of these for demo and we're more than happy to talk you through the application. So that you, you do have the, the, the possibility of, of having a box uh, on loan for a couple of days to oh, try yeah. it out try and make sure that it actually, approach, that, uh, that's real important. Big fans of that. Yeah. And again, if there's if there's problems, you'll, you'll walk them through or you'll change the box to if that's not what they needed. Exactly, yeah, no pressure. Uh, I just wanna make sure you're comfortable with the solution and uh, we have plenty of these on hand. We actually have a bunch at our booth here for other vendors that uh, have problems with what they brought or if they didn't think about it. Oh, that's something. awesome. Yeah. Our, our, that's our awesome. primary uh, revenue is still the open gear cards, and the, uh, we have our own frame, high powered frame. Oh, it's open, all cards, open gear cards will fit into this frame, plus the, uh, the, the Ross open gear frame. Right. So we, we, they, these are some new products we've also introduced this year. I'll let uh, uh, yes. Jesse talk about the. So touching on the open gear frame form factor, uh, it is an open consortium of manufacturers of which we're one of the founding partners. Uh, the beauty of that system is it has one unified control software GUI called Dashboard, and uh, all, all manufacturers design their products to meet the physical and power specs of the open gear standard. So uh, you have plug and play functionality with one unified control point across over 30 manufacturers, so you can get a best of breed solution in the open gear realm without having to get into proprietary platforms. That's really the, the beautiful thing about open gear. We are the largest uh, provider of technology for open gear outside of Oh, I didn't of realize Video. that, really. Yeah, outside of Ross Video, that is the case. And uh, we have uh, a 360 watt frame that is unique to, to Cobalt. So that is in a two RU footprint with 20 card slots. You can get very dense solutions. We support uh, standard BNC, fiber connections, we have HD BNC and DIN 1.023 connectors uh, to achieve high density because the uh, majority of our uh, customer base in the past was trucks. So we've learned to, to sure, know, sure. engineer very dense uh, bang for your buck solutions that find their way into a lot of other applications. Let me focus in on a specific area because we have a lot of people who are uh, you know, in the in the in the podcasting space, if you will, or they're they're, they're with churches or or, or or high schools, colleges, things of that nature. And right now, actually, uh, this morning we had uh, uh, the folks from Streamstar who are actually our sponsors today, but uh, they have a lot of HDMI cameras fl floating around out there that are prosumer models, if you will. And now a lot of the, the of the uh, streaming box solutions are SDI inputs. And uh, a lot of people don't want to afford 
or can't afford to buy the SDI cameras. And what they don't realize is that you actually provide a solution that will take that HDMI yes. and convert that to SDI. Is that not correct? That's correct. And they're small enough and light enough that they can be attached to the camera with very simple you know, Velcro approach or you know something a little more sophisticated that could power off USB. So off the boxes the are quite small. Yes, sir. Yeah. And um, basically, you're going to get access to the uncompressed HDMI signal and you're going to be able to turn that into SDI at a very high quality. So it's a very so, simple, so, cost-effective way to do that. It's certainly cheaper than buying an SDI camera. Oh, definitely. Yeah, you could stay in the prosumer realm, get advantages of all that uh, technology. Uh, What's the box run? I'm just curious. I know you have a couple models. Just, uh, just, yeah, just so, off the top of your head. Uh, I always price, spring these questions on, uh, the, on, on our guests. The list price of the HDMI converters is uh, 465 Okay. And that includes power supply. USB cable and a five-year warranty. So. Probably the cheapest SDI camera is probably about twenty-eight hundred bucks, maybe twenty-five hundred bucks. Yeah. So. So I mean, you know, he, here's an option that this company provides, and certainly they can give you anything that you want in, in range of sophistication. But uh, I frequently get emails or questions that, hey, gadget professor, I have uh, four HDMI cameras that uh, you know, Canon cameras that our church uses, or, or our high school uses, or our college. We love them. We want to get into you know streaming live our sports thing, but we don't we can't afford four SDI cameras. Well, the truth of the matter is, you take that HDMI, you get one of these Cobalt converters, and you're SDI. Yep. For right in the professional workflow from that stage, and we also embed two channels of audio as as PCM embedded audio through the conversion. So there there's your solution. I mean yeah, that, and I get asked that, that probably once or twice a month. So I get email saying, hey, you know. Anything I can do with these HDMI cameras, uh, we don't have the money to buy SDIs. Well, again. And if somebody even has older technology where it hands oh, really? off, well, if they have a camera that has component analog, we have What's the that? companion. Right. <laughs> uh, we have uh, customers um, on the East Coast for a college uh, on, you know, on right. field uh, football production is all based on these old component analog output cameras that they want to turn to SDI. Same exact uh, work scenario there. So. Well, I highly recommend their products. Uh, they, they work. They've been around for a long time. And uh, Just uh, to mention, sorry, sure. to, uh, no, please, I didn't get please, to uh, our please. new technology we're showing well, at the show. Uh, we have a next generation uh, configurable quad split product that will be growing into a multi-viewer. Really? Uh, yeah, it's very powerful uh, technology. It's open gear based and will also be available in this form factor. Uh, composite all the way up to 3G on each input, auto detect, asynchronous inputs, no problem. Uh, you can rescale each quadrant uh, to your desired uh, sizing, so you can have a very uh, flexible uh, mosaic output for the multi viewer. Right. It has time code burn uh, characters per input from embedded Bitsy or RP188 time code. Wow. It has uh, two character generators per quadrant. It has on screen audio metering, so that's very, very exciting for us. Uh, we will be getting a larger share of the trucks and the facility designs now that that's we're, we're awesome. diversifying our lines. We have auto protection switches with intelligent switching, and we also have a next generation up down cross conversion with, with um, that auto changeover functionality built into it and a test generator capability with a bouncing box, which is really. Um, Really valuable to have if you're uh, trying to prove uh, transmission path is, is live and active. Right, right. Frame Verification. traditionally freeze this frame. This will actually tell you that your path is live and active. So more technologies for live production, outside broadcasts uh, at our booth this year. Now, if people wanted more information, obviously they can go to your to your website. That's correct. And yes. where are you located here at uh, NAB? We're we'll for you or booth number. Uh, I kind of Four six two four. Nice. At North Hall four six two four. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're not far from the meatball stand. Yeah, right <laughs> behind the meatball stand. And uh, I'll be around there later yeah, on today. It's uh, cobaltdigital.com. Wait a minute, have you eaten the meatballs here yet? No, or no? I'm looking forward to <laughs> it. Well, until you eat them, don't tell me to. You know, don't recommend <laughs> yeah. it. You know, I've, I've been I've been to NAB a couple times. Don't yeah. eat the brown meatballs. Yeah. <laughs> now, the, the other thing I'd like to say. Sure, quickly, please. When I first no, joined we uh, Cobalt, we. Oh, you've been there eight years. Eight, eight years. We were more of a video company, and we still very much are. But with the complexities of audio, the way we've, we we have a, a very strong, a very strong partnership with uh, Dolby Linear Acoustic, and we have we've been we've developed cards with Dolby Transcoding, uh, um, uh, up mixing, down mixing, and the loudness processing, which in the last few years video. Uh, Digital video is, is uh, a lot simpler, I'm being careful here, 
uh, the audio has grown extremely. Isn't complex. that interesting? You would think the opposite. Yeah, but uh, with the the, the various it's got so know, much the dynamic Dol range. That Dolby E, Dol uh, <laughs> Dolby Digital, Dolby Digital Plus, and say so then the requirement for compliance through loudness processing. And the audio is more complex than the video. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it actually is. I'm uh, surprised. Quite a few standards, and it's very flexible. There's metadata involved, and uh, beyond the hardware solutions that Chris was referencing there, where we do partner with the two industry leading providers of that technology, we have some software solutions, uh, specifically uh, COM compliance solutions, the FCC mandate that everybody needs to have consistent loudness across commercials and programs. Okay, We sure. have a software product that actually will log your performance of your facility at the final emission point and store that data for up to a year. If someone were to complain, you could go back to the FCC and prove that you're uh, in compliance, so and we do the processing as well. That's stuff, I mean, that's critical. That's that's a lot at this point. Yeah, you have very, to have that for validation. Tool. Yeah, yeah $10,000 of fine. Uh, we come in under that on a normal uh, project, uh, so it's like a no-brainer to pick oh, that up. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that, because I, I wasn't even aware of that. I mean, I knew of the law, but I didn't realize you had the equipment to validate. We do, yeah, we yeah. do. That's great. Yeah. That's great. What about 4K video? Anything? Uh... Well, besides initially you know, with fiber products and some DAs, we're all watching 4K very carefully. I mean, I believe it's going to happen, but it's going to take a while. It's probably got more legs than 3D, but those legs have got to start running. You <laughs> see, I mean, this is what we just talked about uh, before you, you folks came on is, is uh, you know, the, the progression. Actually, it's an interesting thread, if you will, if you've been watching the, uh, the show from uh, 9 o'clock this morning. Everybody that's been here, has in some way, shape, or form uh, uh, either shown a 4K product or, or at least mentioned it uh, in, in their technology or in the future of technology. Now, I'm kind of with you. You're saying it's not quite here yet. We just had AMD just before you yep. with, uh, man, they, they had a, a box that was, I mean, beyond on steroids. It was four channel, uh, eight, uh, 4K, 6K. Yep. Right. And uh, I mean, that technology did not exist two years ago. It just did not exist. And here they are. I mean, they're demoing it and they're showing it and it exists. So, you know, I was shocked that they were that far down the line. We're, we're poised to deliver beyond the fiber and the distribution amplifiers that Chris mentioned. Uh, our next generation platform is a quad path 3G SDI platform. So uh, we have a lot of success in color correction for onset monitors or right. live broadcast. Uh, we have the ability to probably turn around a 4K color corrector very quickly. Really? Uh, we also have... So uh, so it, it's in your portfolio. I mean, there's no oh, question about that. It's, it's, yeah. it's coming down the pipe. Uh, we're also going to have down conversion. You know, it, it's all uh, capable on this on this platform. And Christopher, you think it's still a couple of years away? I mean, oh, yeah. mainstream? Now, I think for production... I'm more aggressive about it. It's going to happen sooner. I'm just curious. It's <laughs> just interesting to hear people's <laughs> positions on it. Now, I'm in production are using it. Uh, some, some live uh, uh, using 4K. Uh, to, to, to be fully accepted, you've got to uh, persuade the consumer to uh, purchase sets, well, well, and also you've got to be able to pipe it to the home. Well, Here's the big problem. Be, be, before you get to that point, all the production companies and the broadcasters have to essentially invest in new equipment to, to, to get to the point where they can even see if it's acceptable. So, I mean, it's 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 really a whole uh, paradigm shift in, in technology and, an, and, egg, and at an expense because the stuff is not cheap. I mean, you just look, I mean, just your box alone, that which is not the expensive part, but when you start looking at cameras and, and recorders and, and, and all the equipment that surrounds the 4K environment, yep. uh, it's a, we're talking some well, serious especially cash. Especially when you look at plants who uh, take, spend an awful lot of uh, revenue, money going to HD, and now you're telling them you go the next step? Yeah, uh, that, that's. Where, where I see it's lower volume, but uh, sports production is going 4K in some regards. Uh, but no question. We do a lot with the high-end studios in Los Angeles, and they do have a mandate internally to they be do. ready to go. And they're missing tools like graticle generators, color correctors, and that's that's where we could fill the bill, but that is a lower volume side of the business. It's interesting. So you're thinking it's, what, a year away? Well, I'm talking to people about this stuff uh, now. So, so you're yeah. saying it's here now? In, in, I'm just in, curious. In the yeah. higher echelons of, of Hollywood, it's here now. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And you're saying a year well, or two? I'm looking more at the at consumer the end. Consumer end. Okay, yeah. and how long do you think that is? Uh, it, it, we've got to find a way to uh, pipe it to uh, the home. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to do that. ATSC 3.0, I don't think, is encompassing. I'm speaking out of school now, but uh, that part of the, our business moves very slowly. You know, So uh, this would be new media delivery over the top, Netflix type of stuff. Um, you know, 
and uh, you know cinematic uh, release level. Oh, that's very everything. interesting. Well, I thank you, gentlemen, so much for coming in. It was thank fascinating, and I wish you uh, okay. much yeah, success. And uh, we'll contact you, or you contact me, and we'll have a we'll have a video for you. All right, okay. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Great. We'll, we'll thank you. I appreciate we'll, you coming. We're we able to put that on our website. You were able to do whatever you want with it. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. I'll, I'll and you had the gadget professor's approval because I love your stuff. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, thank well, you very much. My pleasure, sir.